Scantegrity 2 is a new end-to-end -end election verification tool that can be added on to existing optical scan voting systems. The coolness of the idea is simply this. When you vote, you get a special confirmation number of your vote right on the ballot. This will allow you as a voter to get something you really can't get in a regular election. That is to say, proof that your vote really did make it all the way to electing the person you voted for. The key idea in Scantegrity 2 is the ballot. It's similar to a regular optical scan ballot, except there are confirmation codes written inside the optical scan bubbles. The codes are printed in a special invisible ink, so when the voter initially receives the ballot, they cannot see the codes. But, by using a special pen to mark their selections, the confirmation codes are revealed. The voter is able to write down this code on a special detachable receipt portion and retain it for future reference. The codes are randomly chosen, so if someone sees your code, they don't get information about who you voted for. The top portion is scanned and retained by the election administration, as would be done in any optical scan election. The codes are an integral part of what's called end-to-end -end verification. The idea is simple. A confirmation code is attached to a particular candidate. Now, to preserve voter privacy, we can't just associate the two directly we use what's known as an anonymizing network, which is just a fancy way of saying that you can check this association without revealing who voted for whom. It works like this. Your code gets entered into the network and your vote comes out the other side in some random spot. The reason this is anonymizing is because all the codes are entered at once and all the votes come out at once in a shuffled way. So how does this network work? There are several ways to implement it, some being more difficult to explain than others. In our paper, we propose a simple network which we call the switchboard that resembles an old-fashioned telephone switchboard. This can get a little complicated to show with all the wires running everywhere, so I'll explain it to you using the network of another voting system, Aperio. The Aperio anonymizing network is called a ballot table. Imagine a table with three columns. The first column is for an ID. In this case, we're talking about a serial number and a confirmation code. Beside that, we have a column to write the associated candidate. And finally, we have a third column, which will contain some sort of information about what the voter did, either mark the bubble or not. To create this ballot table, we begin by copying down the codes and candidates of a ballot. We repeat this for all ballots, creating a table of ballots, i.e. a ballot table. But this is not private because the first row of the table is the first bubble of the first ballot. So the election authority needs to shuffle up all these rows. Now, this can be done with cryptography such that no one knows how it got shuffled. Once they've done this, they cover up the columns. This again can be done with cryptography. The ballot table now gets posted in a public place. The idea is that although the information is hidden, it can't be changed by anyone we say that the table has been committed to. When the election is over, all the marks made on the ballots get collected and filled in the ballot table in their appropriate location. Again, there are ways to use cryptography such that no one has to peek under the tape to do this. Now we are ready to audit our election. We're going to begin by checking the voter receipts. We ask the election officials to peel off the tape of the ID column. Now all the voter has to do is find their ID and see if it really was recorded as having been marked, as it should have been. We call this recorded as marked integrity verification. This is the first half of our audit. But what if we had opened the other half? If we ask the election official to remove that tape, we get a list of candidates who were voted for. You can take this list and just sum them up to produce an election total, which you can compare to the officially declared outcome. It's that simple. This provides what we call counted as recorded integrity. If we team up with recorded as marked integrity, we get counted as marked integrity. That is to say, what got counted is precisely what you marked. Hence, you verified the election from end to end. Now remember, we don't peel off the tape from both columns at the same time to protect the ballot secrecy. But what we could have done was created another ballot table with its own shuffling. 
In fact, the election officials could produce as many tables as are necessary. The public can get together and flip a coin. Let's just say heads, we peel off the ID tape, and tails, we peel off the candidate tape. We do this for each table, and in this way we can run the audit on all the tables and compare the results to each other and to the official outcome. And that's it! Scantegrity 2 and end-to-end -end verification, in a nutshell. If you'd like to learn more about Scantegrity 2, check out the 2008 Electronic Voting Technology Workshop presented in San Jose, California. If you'd like to learn more about Aperio, check out the 2008 Workshop on Trustworthy Elections presented this year in Belgium. Thanks for listening, and happy voting!